Yang berhormat Dr. Sri Haji Nancy Shukri, Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Yang berbahagia Tan Sri Majid Khan, Deputy Chairman of KSI Strategic Institute, Yang berbahagia Dr. Dr. Noor Zari Hamid, Secretary General of the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Excellencies, Dr. Dr. Ladies and Gentlemen. Allow me to extend a very warm welcome to the Honourable Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture to grace our luncheon this afternoon, and it is the second time that the Minister is attending a KSI function within one month, and I'm very, very honoured that Minister is coming to so many of our events so soon. Thank you so much, Dr. Sri. Yang Bohmat, Dr. Sri, Nancy Shukri, I believe, is a most apt tourism minister for Malaysia at this time, coming from Sarawak. And as Sarawak is a major and well-known tourism destination for adventure and ecotourism as well as for cultural tourism. We are so delighted that the minister is able to be with us here today. I wish to inform the Honourable Minister that apart from the participants gathered in this room, we are joined by also speakers and participants from Australia, China, Singapore, India, Thailand and Hong Kong, who spoke to us virtually this morning and who are still participating in this conference online. Many of them had wanted to come to Malaysia but have been unable to do so with COVID travel restrictions. It is therefore our hope that at some point soon, we can open our borders again and welcome back business and leisure travellers to Malaysia. I have been receiving representation from many government and from many private sector organisations to call in the government to consider a slight variation in the travel ban on some countries now, and to seriously consider allowing business visitors to come in, but after compliance with the SOPs. The country needs investors, and business travel is essential, although limited. We do hope, Minister, you can take this message back to your colleagues in the Cabinet and try to persuade them to seriously consider allowing restricted business travel to the country. This Asia Economic Summit connects business in Asia Pacific and it also helps promote tourism. As I've said earlier, we are working together with the Pacific Basin Economic Council, which is the oldest business organization in the Asia Pacific region that was formed back in 1961 in San Francisco. And the PBAC has been promoting business entrepreneur exchanges, including tourist exchanges. So we hope that the Minister's keynote address to us today can inspire us further to see how we can further drive the growth of tourism in Malaysia as well as in the Asia-Pacific region. Every year, this Asia Economic Entrepreneurship Summit honours several business leaders with a Lifetime Achievement Award. Today, we are also taking this opportunity to honour several distinguished business leaders for their Lifetime Achievement Award for outstanding leadership in entrepreneurship. I wish to congratulate all of the award recipients who will be receiving this Lifetime Achievement Award shortly. So once again, I wish to thank the Honourable Minister and to congratulate you on your fine efforts to promote tourism in Malaysia. Sekian, terima kasih. Thank you, Tan Sri. Next, we will be having the luncheon keynote address by the Honourable Minister. But before I invite the Honourable Minister on stage, I'd like to first read out a poem. Colours of Malaysia are everywhere. Come and enjoy them in open air. Health and safety are not to be spared. Together we explore with care. Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, may I present the Honourable Dr. Sri Haja Nancy Shukri, Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, Malaysia.
Thank you, MC. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Yang bahagia Tan Sri Michael Yeo, President of Kingsley Strategic Institute for Asia Pacific. Yang bahagia Tan Sri Majid Khan, Deputy Chairman of KSI Strategic Institute for Asia Pacific. Tan Sri Lee, is he here? Tan Sri Lee, left already. Yeah? Uh, and Excellencies, not forgetting our uh, Sekjen, Datuk Dr. Nurzari. Uh, Excellencies, Tan Sri, Tan Sri, Datuk, Datuk, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor to be here again uh, with uh, Case I, with our esteemed audience and participants of the 2020 Asia Economic and Entrepreneurship Summit, which carries the theme Growing Partnership for Inclusive, Innovative, and Sustainable Growth. Thank you very much to KSI Strategic Institute for Asia Pacific, the Pacific Basin Economic Council, or PBAC, and China Daily Asia Pacific, or CD, for inviting me to make this presentation on reviving the tourism industry to stimulate economic recovery and sustainable growth and for putting together such an excellent conference. I'm sure that the comfort and grandeur of this setting will lay the foundations of a productive conference for the inspiration of new ideas and concepts for the progress of Malaysia's development. I applaud this initiative by KSI and team in assisting the micro small, medium, or large, new or well-established business communities in times of uncertainty as our challenges might be different, yet all of us are in the same boat. We are all worried, anxious, and unsure of what may come. But come what may, we must stay united and committed. More crucial than ever, collaboration is the manner we should move ahead towards the recovery of our economic and sustainable growth. Ladies and gentlemen, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, or UNSDGs, has emphasized that tourism and culture play an important role as a catalyst for economic development in a sustainable, responsible, and inclusive manner. According to the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, I quote here, the world can and must harness the power of tourism as we strive to carry out the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Devel Development, unquote. Therefore, MOTEC is on the right track when the primary strategic direction is to transform Malaysia's tourism industry by harnessing public-private sector partnerships and embracing digitalization to drive innovation and competitiveness towards sustainable and inclusive development. This is in line with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and Shared Prosperity Vision, or SPV 2030. The three pillars of this strategy are competitiveness, inclusiveness, and sustainability. This, however, does not mean that the number of tourists is not important, but rather the concentration will be on the amount of money spent by tourists as well as their length of stay, meaning quality or high-yield tourists. Malaysia, too, has sent a strong signal that innovation through digital transformation is the main driver to accelerate growth and remain relevant in the highly disruptive technological age. Our Prime Minister has recently made an announcement about digitalization efforts through the implementation of the National Digital Network under the 12th Malaysia Plan as one of the focus given in the 10-point program that portrays the government's strong commitment towards sustainable tourism. As we all know, innovation in an industry requires the development of new concepts because of the constant need for competitive advantage. Naturally, innovation based on new ideas is a 
appropriate for the industry, where competitive advantage and intellectual property of technologies is the key factor. Please allow me to share my experience with innovation through digitalization. Not long after the revolution of the digital right hailing that took over Malaysia's transportation services market rapidly in 2016. It was indeed a painful start. I believe many of us here have read about how the taxi industry fought back and held protests against both the government and e-hailing service providers. It's understandable as they were struggling to keep up with the, competi the competition caused by the digital transformation. Back then, I was the minister in the Prime Minister's department, overseeing government agencies that included Land Public Transport Agency, or SPAD, and now it has been changed to APAD. So what did we do to tackle that? Our way forward was to hold a taxi lab which saw the formulation of the Taxi Industry Transformation Program, or TITP, that contains 11 initiatives, including regulating the e-hailing business. From the engagement, we learned that acceptance of the innovation through digitalization was supported by a study commissioned by the lab where 70% of the 45,000 respondents wanted the government to regulate e-hailing. The success continued when Malaysia became the first country to legalize e-hailing services following the passing of the Land Public Transport Amendment Bill 2017 and the Commercial Vehicles Licensing Board Act Amendment Bill 2017 in Dewan Rakyat. Looking at it now, e-hailing services has become a necessity for many. Innovation is required in this digital age. Innovation involves change, a change in our behavior for the benefit of our nation. This change has now become the call in the new norm that we face in our concerted efforts to break the pandemic chain. Ladies and gentlemen, MOTEC's mission is to establish Malaysia as a world-class tourist and cultural destination whilst simultaneously building the national identity based on arts, culture, and heritage. However, since many countries impose a ban or restriction on international travel, more emphasis is being put on domestic tourism to help offset the downturn in the economy due to the absence of foreign contributions at the moment. In 2019, domestic tourism expenditure amounted to 103.2 billion ringgit, a rise of 11.5% from the previous year. This shows that the domestic segment plays a key role in generating income for the economy. In fact, hotels as well as popular resorts and beach destinations, particularly in the East Coast states of Pahang, Trenggano, and Langkawi too, were reportedly having congested traffic of occupancy rates after the recovery phase was announced in June. Most economic activities, including domestic travel, was allowed and tourism-related businesses resumed its operations while adhering to the new normal with strict hygiene practices and standard operating procedures. For us at MOTEC, we have built our own strategies and we have planned on how we would want to recover. Although the World Tourism Organization or the UNWTO has mentioned that it would take four years to fully recover. We do not want to wait that long. We have our target, which is set for the second quarter of next year. 
to regain the competitiveness of Malaysia's tourism industry in an increasingly competitive and uncertain world. MORTEC has come up with a transformation agenda that will focus on efforts to increase revenue, secure partnerships and investments, empower local communities, and ensure the sustainability and resilience of the industry. To date, ladies and gentlemen, several recovery plans have been implemented, which saw the latest economic stimulus package, the National Economic Regeneration Plan, or PENJANA, provide robust economic incentives for tourism, arts, and culture sectors. Under, the, under this plan, budget hotels, registered homestays, under Motec, chalets, resorts, travel agencies, and tour operators, MICE ecosystem, the transportation providers for tourists, tourism-related retails, recreation and wellness will benefit from the one billion ringgit allocation to enable them to remain viable and competitive in the new normal. The initiative was also introduced following the change in the tourism business landscape in the new normal emphasizing health and safety protocols. Consumer preferences for Online booking and contactless transaction has also increased, and therefore, digitalization in all possible touch points and marketing strategy is a must to fulfill customer expectation and satisfaction. It is also the best time for us to promote hidden gems in our countryside as tourists are expected to prefer secluded destinations with a relaxed environment and plenty of fresh air. Malaysia is home to one of the world's most diverse ecosystem, and we have great potentials for eco-tourism and sustainable tourism. The local homestay experience, for instance, can offer the opportunity to live in a traditional village while enjoying the best of Malaysian hospitality. This can help fuel greater innovation and enterprise in our local communities to promote authentic local delights and exciting outdoor activities that truly live up to our tagline of Malaysia, truly Asia. Ladies and gentlemen, as such, MOTEC has continuously strengthened collaborations with the industry players and associations within the sector to offer rebates and incentives by purchasing tourism packages to entice consumers and to stimulate domestic spending. For example, hotels can offer rebates or free stay with every purchase, such as complimentary third, right, third night to guests for every two consecutive paid nights. Ladies and gentlemen, sharing my experience when I first entered the office as the Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture on March 10th, nobody knew that the whole world would be in lockdown. I was worried because as an industry that involves the movement of people and enables people-to-people -people connectivity, tourism is primarily the first to take a beating and the last to recover. I was lucky because I have a highly committed team headed by our SecGen down there, Dato Dr. Nozari, who have worked around the clock during the MCO and with the teamwork and cooperation of the various stakeholders. We managed to have continuous engagement virtually during MCO and CMCO. During that difficult time, one of Motex agencies Craft Tangan Malaysia was among the first to launch an initiative on social media, namely the Facebook group known as eCraft Bazaar. I am happy to learn that this platform received a tremendous response with a membership of 12,176 people, including 1,122 craft entrepreneurs and total sales of 4.21 million ringgit since March. 
Thank you. Thank you. Also, a craft on the go smartphone application was introduced to provide digital services of geolocation directory information containing craft entrepreneur profiles, product descriptions, images, social media information, and outlet locations that can be accessed directly via Google Maps. As of July 31st, this application had featured 923 craft entrepreneur profiles and has been downloaded 1,389 times. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to also share programs that we have executed to promote Malaysia as a safe destination to go, be it for tourism or business event. The Meet in Malaysia campaign by the Malaysia Convention and Exhibition Bureau, or MICEP, has la was launched last month to revive the business events industry. It encompasses two initiatives. Firstly, let's meet locally, and the second being let's meet tomorrow. Fortunately, the outlook for the business events industry in Malaysia is on the positive side, as many events that were due to take place in Malaysia have been postponed instead of being cancelled. To date, the number of events that were secured and supported by MySAP looks promising with only 24 events being cancelled and 64 postponed. Furthermore, ladies and gentlemen, Malaysia has been chosen to be the host for World Tunnel Congress 2020 with 2,000 international participants gathering virtually this Friday, 11th until 17th September 2020. And I am proud to announce that this Congress is organized by MySAP, where a virtual exhibition will be part of the activities. Although the international delegates are unable to attend the Congress physically, we hope all delegates will visit Malaysia in the future and experience our business events, world-class facilities, and tourist attractions when the time comes. I am very sure that once it is time to fully bounce back, Malaysia will be on the preferred list of destinations again, given that we have time and time again made headlines as one of the most effective countries in handling COVID-19, inshallah. To help and support the organizations and people working in arts and culture at, at, ri at risk due to the COVID-19 crisis, MOTEC has focused on recovery and revitalized the arts and culture industry. For recovering the plan, MOTEC has approved 668,000 ringgit to assist 243 NGOs affected due to COVID-19 crisis in efforts to revitalize the arts and culture industry. MOTEC approved almost 1 million ringgit in supporting NGOs to kickstart arts and culture programs after the Recovery Movement Control Order or the RMCO. One of the beneficiaries is the Gera Angin Malaysia's first virtual arts festival which embodies the national artistic and cultural spirit through the strategic partnership between three NGOs and MOTEC. Using an entirely digital medium in the comforts of your home on Malaysia Day, please make sure you remember this, Malaysia Day, that is 16th September 2020. Gerak Angin will showcase three popular genre within the industry, that is dance, music, and theater, starting from the special day and before, sec be days, before 16 days by 17 performing arts companies. I'd like to remind you once again, please make sure that you'll be watching this on the 16th of September. Moving forward, MOTAC through Islamic Tourism Center, or the ITC, has taken a step ahead in expanding its services by creating a new scheme under the Malaysia the Muslim friendly tourism concept 
for hotels known as Muslim Friendly Accommodation Recognition or MFAR. Introduced in July 2020, the Muslim Friendly Accommodation Recognition Scheme is the first of its kind in the world initiated by the government for the hotel industry. It has received good support from Malaysian Association of Hotels and Malaysian, Associate, Malaysian Association of Hotel Owners and Malaysian Budget Hotels Association. As a minister, I see the introduction of this MFAR by ITC is an added value to the existing Motax Hotel star rating. It will further strengthen the national tourism industry, especially in the Muslim-friendly tourism market segment. ITC had received applications from 25 hotels of different categories, including top brands. The number is very small, but the campaign is still ongoing, and therefore I urge more hoteliers who are here today in this hall to come forward to participate in this MFAR scheme due to its benefits to the hotels from a sales and marketing point of view. Since Muslim travels have increased, hotels must be prepared to offer Muslim tourists with the necessary assurance and Islamic values in their services. Ladies and gentlemen, innovation is much more than inventing or creating new ideas. It is all about a mindset change. Innovation has to be developed into our culture and the efforts of innovating Malaysia must be continuous as it is a work in progress. The success depends on our people. The industry players are the ones who need to make use of initiatives and facilities that have been provided and work for transformation. I hope all industry players come together and help to uplift each other, especially during the trying time. As Henry Ford once said, I quote here, Coming together is a beginning. Staying together is progress. And working together is success. Unquote. Before I conclude, let me share with you a quote from John F. Kennedy. I quote here, When written in Chinese, the word crisis is composed of two characters. One represents danger and the other represents opportunity, unquote. With that in mind, I would like to remind everyone here that a successful response to the crisis requires us to innovate and find new ideas. So let's work together to restart and revive the tourism and cultural sec sectors with the hopes of emerging stronger and more sustainable than ever before. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you to every one of you for being here and investing your time and efforts to attend this conference. I wish you all a great conference and fruitful deliberations and a happy Malaysia Day that's coming. Sekian wa billahi taufiq wal hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Thank you.